Hello, Calaveras County, and welcome to another edition of Mondo Calaveras. I'm your host, Mike Taylor. Now, we're getting close to that time when the big guy shows up in his sleigh, and if you've lived in Calaveras County, in the mother load, for any length of time, you're familiar with an organization that kind of magically sprouts during this time of year, but it's actually a year-round effort, and my guest today is Jeannie Hayward, the director of the Resource Connection Food Bank here in the county. Welcome, Jeannie. Thank you. You Thank bet. You. Now, uh, let's kind of come at this from sort of the whole county, and then we'll get into sort of the holiday fun that's coming up for us. How big a problem is hunger in Calaveras County? Well, I'll give you an example. So I have good data from last year. Let's mm -hmm. just talk about last year. So okay. last year we served 14% of the population living in Calaveras County. That's okay. 6,299 individuals. My gosh. And that's only counting them one time. Mm -hmm. And that's only counting those that came into the food bank. Where Actually in San Andreas. In San Andreas. Okay. And we have uh, pantries. We have a network of 13 pantries mm -hmm. in Calaveras. And some people only go to the pantries. Sure. So, because they can't make it all the way maybe mm -hmm. to San Andreas. So I can easily say 14% is a really good number of people that we served. In that number, um, a lot of children, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, probably over 1,800 children, 258 really? veterans. Um, wow, okay. So it's a large number. Now this year, what we saw was the numbers coming down a little bit, which in some ways is good news, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, that we helps. We would hope. We would hope. <laughs> but we also, um, in talking with um, people that were talking about leaving the county, mm -hmm. um, and those people would be at the you know, at the bottom of the economic pyramid, let's sure. just say. And they're, they're leaving the county to seek employment somewhere else. To seek employment else. because mm -hmm. they couldn't find jobs here. Yeah. So right now we're serving between 800 and 900 families a month at the food bank okay. as compared to maybe close to a thousand families a month last year. Okay. So people can come into the food bank once every 30 days and then we have them go to other food programs that we provide and then pantries provide. Because mm -hmm. there so, aren't a lot of those uh, pantries in area churches? They are. They're in community. Um, community groups come together and mm -hmm. put together a pantry. Uh, a lot of faith-based organ faith organizations mm -hmm. put together, have pantries. Um, okay. All over Calaveras. So if you live in Moquil, there's a pantry. If you live in Angels Camp, if you live in Murphy's, we really have the whole community covered with access sure. to food. Yeah, and so th as they come in that once every 30 days, what do they get, you know, a grocery cartload mm -hmm. of food, or how, how does that work? Yeah, what they, they, actually... they pretty much do get a grocery cartload of food. Okay. Um, we have some wonderful donors that um, we have um, Aura Wheat who donates bread, and sometimes we get a lot of bread from Aura Wheat. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you were getting bread from the food bank, it would be like shopping at the grocery store. You're getting that wonderful fresh bread mm -hmm. that Aura Wheat provides. So they could walk out with three or four loaves of bread. Great. They could walk out with 30 pounds of fresh produce, which wow, is really important to produce, me. Yeah. So it could be potatoes, carrots, onions, uh, oranges, apples, um, a lot of variety. And aren't some of our county's school gardens and community gardens starting to contribute to that? Um, we're talking about that. Okay. They're really contributing to their local areas first, which sure. I think is most important. Yeah. Um, and the kids are eating the produce and the at kids school are at eating, lunch. That's so. right, and that's really important. <laughs> you bet. And so we, what we really like is the schools doing that and and giving the food out within their right local there area. Right okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and we have a community garden as well at mm -hmm. the food bank, and so that was... That's been going a couple of years? Well, it's about three or four years, yeah. yeah. okay. So the Rotary helped put that together for mm -hmm. us in Calaveras, and it's it's done really and well. And is that kind of volunteer-grown yeah. intended? It is. Oh, it is. a staff and, and volunteers. We love volunteers to come in and help us. Sure. And so, um, and then beyond that, with groceries, um, uh, you know, here's a picture of some of the groceries, um, and we can talk about this a little specifically later, but um, canned foods, mm -hmm. um, uh, frozen foods, uh, refrigerated foods, um, boxed foods, um, a lot of non-perishable foods, Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, a, and a pretty good variety. How do folks go about contributing, we're going to bounce around a little mm -hmm. bit, but you mentioned frozen foods, and I would have just 
knowing, you know, okay, so you need me to bring, you know, a bunch of frozen food, mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever it might be, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's Cornish game hens, a turkey, whatever, you can accept those kinds of food too, not just what we see here, which are basically the non-perishables, right? We can, we can, yeah. but okay. we also purchase those kinds of things. Oh, I see. And so we go, um, we're part of Feeding America, which is a okay. national nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. and we go down to Manteca and we purchase, um, and I say purchase lightly, um, we pay a shared maintenance fee to participate mm -hmm. and receive that what I would call donated food. Okay. And so um, they have, uh, like Safeway or Save Mart is, mm -hmm. is a prime example. They donate food to Feeding America and we can go down and maybe get a bin, a large bin of frozen food or I a large see. bin of okay. refrigerated food. So it's a mixture of, you know, all different kinds of foods. Kind of a get. food bank grocery store. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, what we started talking about and what I alluded to at the beginning is Santa's Express. Now I'm familiar with this organization because it started in this county more than 30 years ago? Yeah, just about 30. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was a volunteer organization. It was people who saw that there was a need, that there were families that didn't have food, and this was before we even had a food bank, if my memory is oh, correct. Mm -hmm. And so they just started collecting food for Thanksgiving and Christmas time. So at what point did the resource connection kind of become the umbrella that Santa's Express operated under? Well, that was a little bit before my time as director. Okay. And um, they worked with the food bank probably, I would say, 10 years before. Mm hmm Okay. Um, and the food bank helped um, with food access and, and getting donated foods in and sure. that kind of thing. Kind of shoring up the donations that exactly. came in from the community. Exactly. And then um, when I came in in 2009, we had just moved into our new building. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, it was all happening at the town hall. Yep, if you that's recall. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so it was <laughs> downstairs and upstairs. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot fewer people were served, mm -hmm. um, partly because of capacity. And partly because there were a few hung, a fewer hungry people at that time. Mm -hmm. We hadn't hit the re the Great Recession, the recession that, yeah. at that point. And uh, you know, with the building of the food bank and everything, just kind of happened all at the same time. So my first year of running it, we moved it to the food bank, mm -hmm. and um, really the whole community at that point, because we were in recession. And I think they really got it that there were a lot of people out of work, yeah. neighbors, friends, people mm -hmm. at church, people they knew, yeah. and they really embraced it. Yeah. And so we do a huge food drive, which you see the Santa's Express bought red boxes everywhere. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. tell viewers. You you see those bins, and they'll about when will they start showing Next up? Next week. Oh, okay. Next so they'll week. be out here in the the second week in November, yep. and they're at stores and banks and, and all kinds of businesses all over the county. Exactly. And that's where you donate all this good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there are two distributions, right? There's one for Thanksgiving and one for Christmas. Well, Thanksgiving, um, over the past couple of years, we've done a little different. Okay. Um, we made it a little easier so people didn't have to come all at one day. I see. So if I was a client today, mm -hmm. I could come to the food bank and everything you see on this table right here is in a bag. Mm -hmm. already pre-bagged for me, and it's got the cranberry sauce, the green beans, the soup, uh, stuffing, the stuffing, everything, the... everything but the turkey. Mm -hmm. And actually, right now, we're passing out 10 pounds of chicken along with this. Oh, okay. But if I was a client and I received all of this food, along with my regular food, I could pick up. So mm -hmm. this is in addition to. Okay. Um, I might not have to purchase all of these things and then I could get a turkey or a ham or whatever it is that I wanted for I Thanksgiving. See. Okay. So Thanksgiving has turned out a little bit different mm -hmm. than Christmas okay. and Christmas then has become much bigger. I see. So we've concentrated on a one day distribution for Christmas that's mm -hmm. become huge. It's truly Christmas. It's truly Christmas. It's really something else. It and is. we'll talk about that in a minute yep. because that's where the kids get involved mm -hmm. and that's where really if, if you're like me, you're, you'll the tears will fall every once in a while because I've talked to some mothers that... Mm -hmm. um, these foods, yep. um, non-perishable food is kind of this weird amorphous term that, you know, because even the can of cut yams here 
has a sell-by date on it, oh. which depending on who you listen to, that date means something or it's just some arbitrary thing that a producer throws on the can. But what kinds of food are we talking about for folks to drop into those bins that they see around the so, county? We really like a variety. Mm -hmm. And so if you would think about what you would have on your dinner plate at sure. Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. then I would hope that you would donate that. You bet. Um, so there's cranberry sauce, there's cream of mushroom Some soup. green beans for the famous casserole, mm -hmm. there's, stuffing. There's yams. We've got the yams. Yep. Yep. Okay. And some marshmallows. Marshmallows for fun. to go on the yams. Um, some hot cereal. I always like to include cereal go. because yep. we're coming into winter time. Mm -hmm. And hot cereal is awesome. A little yep. dessert, um, some other kind of soups, rice, um, beans, okay. any kind of dried kind kinds of, of things. It's pantry stuff. It right? is. It is. Um, peanut butter and jelly. Oh, okay. Uh, See, and I could eat that for dinner. Maybe not on Thanksgiving, but I'll eat that for dinner. But, <laughs> but when we're able to add those kind of things mm -hmm. at during the holidays, it really helps families a lot because oh, we already know that they're going to be pinched because they're going to be shopping and, yeah. and doing some extra things for kids. And, and we're not just giving them one meal, not, so to speak. We're not. You know, because even while those, well, if you're like me, the leftovers are dinner for another right, week. Exactly. But still, it's nice to sort of load them up with a good mix of things. Right. So on top of this, um, a regular think about a regular bag of food that you would want um, to feed your family for a couple more days beyond mm -hmm. beyond this that you can okay. mix and match and make things other things out of. Well, and what I was thinking about before we met here today to to film this is really if you're at the grocery store and on your way in you're going to see the container. It's very well labeled. It's got the poster. You know it's going in. And one thing, and I, maybe this is me just being a little bit negative, but people don't seem to steal from these containers no, they when don't. they see them there. But what I was thinking of is, is as I'm walking through the store and grabbing a container of hot cereal, mm -hmm. why not grab another one exactly. and almost set up two little parts of your basket and... You know, right. so you grab two cans of beans instead of one, and two cans of cream corn instead of one, and two boxes of stuffing, and so on. And for the holiday season, and like we'll talk a little bit too year round, mm -hmm. um, you can help set somebody else up for dinner too. You can, and it makes a huge difference. People are so grateful, and and I just have to tell you yeah. that. Especially right now, people are so grateful for what we've just gone through as a community. Yeah, that's in, and we talked about that, the Butte Fire. Yeah. How did that affect the food bank specifically? I know initially you guys were helping any and everyone who sent up the flare, so, so to speak. So if you can imagine, we had how many thousands of people that were evacuated, mm -hmm. okay? Um, all those people lost all of their food, right? Oh, that's true. Out of the refrigerator. Yep. yep. So we were very, we actually took food out to some of the areas that we knew were most affected. Mm -hmm. um, but we had a lot of people coming in. On top of that, if you can imagine all of our surrounding communities being so generous, um, coming in and donating at the same time. Wow. So, for example, we normally receive about 90,000 pounds of donated food in a month, mm -hmm. okay? That's kind of the average for okay. us, um, which is pretty high for a small community like ours, but okay. it's, it's pretty awesome. Great. In a week and a half, it was 330,000 pounds Oh, of my food. goodness. And it was in all shapes and sizes with <laughs> 17 pallets of number 10 cans that were this big. Oh, my God. Of peaches and something <laughs> else, mixed vegetables, and more water than you know what to do with. Yep. Um, but a lot of really good food. Oh, that's and, great. And soaps. And uh, um, I have a, a bin of toothbrushes <laughs> and but people were so generous and mm -hmm. so concerned about the welfare of our community yeah and it was incredible and so not only were we busy with clients we were very very busy managing the donations and mm -hmm. that was huge and then m in ensuring the integrity of that food. Oh, sure. Um, because yeah. you can't just leave it out overnight and no. assume it's going to be okay. And so, Yeah, because I'm sure the raccoons here in San oh. Andreas know right where the food <laughs> bank do. is, if that were the case. <laughs> <laughs> they do. So it, it, was, um, 
you know, it was long days and yep. long nights and making sure that, you know, we were counting, you know, because we have obligation to make sure with donors to make sure that we're counting um, poundage and, oh, and yes. what we receive okay. mm -hmm. and, and then what we give out and, and all those kind of things. So it was, it was quite crazy for, oh, for a imagine. few weeks. Yeah. But, you know, staff really rose to the occasion. They were amazing. We had a lot of volunteers come through. We had that's church groups great. come in to help. It was incredible. It's, it, and that's the thing that, that really does make me emotional thinking about all this is this community really does just, it, it doesn't stand up to help. It jumps up it to does. help. And, and not a lot of us have a lot but we're perfectly willing to help out that person who needs yeah. that hand. And this, my experience, and I'm going to tell a story about the food bank that goes back to one of your predecessors, Billy Westernoff. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, um, and in my job, in my real life, I write for a newspaper, and it was probably less than three months after I had started writing for the paper. And I didn't realize what a hunger problem we had then, and now I'm talking probably about 10 to 12 years mm -hmm. ago. Um, and I wrote a story with Billy about, you know, oh my gosh, and I remembered using the word working poor, and she absolutely detested that yeah. term um, because it, it demeans the fact that they're working, you know, right. and, and that's the sad part is minimum wage. Everyone knows you can't make a life out of minimum wage. Right. I mean, after you make the car payment, the rent, the house mm -hmm. payment, whatever you've got, you're lucky to put ramen noodles on the table, let alone, you know, this bounty. But the story ran in a Tuesday edition of the newspaper, and that morning, by 9 o'clock, Billy called me, and she said, I had four people waiting here who didn't know we had a food bank. Mm -hmm. And that's where I kind of realized, one, the power of the pen, mm -hmm. but two, the power of being able to show people that, yes, there is assistance out here. Right. And it doesn't make you a low life because you need some help. No. And it doesn't make you a person who's on the bottom of our rung, a bottom of our ladder. Um, you're just someone else in our community who right now needs that helping hand. So I think that, you know, San Jose Express is just another way for this community to jump in and say, what can I do? Exactly. And that's why I made that suggestion about the grocery store folks. So buy two of everything mm -hmm. at least two times in the next two months. <laughs> there, I challenged you. And uh, we can help a lot of people have a good Christmas that's and right. Thanksgiving that's meal. Right. Now, um, when the Thanksgiving is kind of over, what I always kind of worry about is that people think, oh, I gave for Thanksgiving, so I don't need to give anything for Christmas. And it's interesting to me to hear you say that Christmas has gotten to be the really big deal because I know it's a big deal because that's when the toy drive part mm -hmm. of Santa's Express kicks in. So tell folks a little bit about how that works. I will. Um, so the red boxes are still out mm -hmm. after the holidays. Yeah, they don't go away for a couple of months. No, <laughs> um, and during November we do stuff the bus, and so we we really yeah, and you try, have a few of those have coming. A few up. of those coming mm -hmm. up, um, which is really awesome. Uh, starting this Saturday, each Saturday in November for the first three Saturdays, uh, asking people to donate. My goal is 200 turkeys donated. I think our oh, wow. community could do that. Oh yeah. But that's my goal is to get 200 turkeys donated. And then we continue to collect food um, through the schools and through the community mm -hmm. all the way through December. And at the same time, the toys. And this year, um, Pat Garyhan has headed up Toys for Tots, the Marines oh, Toys for okay. Tots. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very excited about it because um, it's kind of given us that push, that mm -hmm. extra push that we really needed. And um, so what happens on day of, so people understand what they're giving to, is that families will come through, they'll get their food from us, um, and that's actually offered in three locations. And we do this all okay. in one day, mm -hmm. in about five hours. Um, I'm anticipating us serving 1,200 families this year. Goodness, okay. Um, so West Point has a location, Murphy's has a location, and then the food bank. So if I was coming to the food bank, I would come and get my food mm -hmm. at the food bank, and it's a drive-through. Don't get yeah. out of my car. There's, there's kind of going to be a line because there's, there's quite a few of you. There's a line. But that line keeps moving. It does, very quickly. Yes, it does. You have a, a truckload of volunteers helping you, too. It's, it's just amazing. great. 
And then I have, so let's just say I have two children, and mm -hmm. I happen to have them with me in the car. And we head over to Mountain Oaks School mm -hmm. and Park. And my kids go into another area, mm -hmm. and there's Santa and Mrs. Claus, and they get pictures taken, and they can play some games and yep. be entertained. Mm -hmm. Well, I go shopping for my children. I go in. I take my place in line. I actually have a volunteer shopper that comes with me. They already have my list of children. Mm -hmm. And we go and get a couple of toys and some stocking stuffers for each child. Oh, that's so cool. And this year, more than ever, I just think we're just going to have an amazing amount of toys. I'm so excited. <laughs> and, and that's really important. Well, that's the part that, that makes me the most emotional about Santa's Express, because I have talked to a mother a couple different times, a couple different mothers, mm -hmm. who d d just can't believe that all of this is, is being done for her right. and her kids. And seeing the kids just they can't believe it either and really we're good I mean I literally watched about a four-year-old boy look at his mother and say we're gonna have Christmas mm -hmm. that's not that's something a family should be able or should have to ask right. but they do and that's the part that you know like I say I get emotional about because I have seen these people and like I say they're not scum of the earth right. they aren't the dregs of society there are friends and there our neighbors. are wonderful people who just happen to need some food for the table and a couple of gifts so that their kids feel like right. Santa showed up so um, so I that's have a story of one of my experiences with Great. Santa's Express one of my first years doing it um, we were at the food bank and there was a woman who came through the line and I can remember her pickup I remember the color of it and you know, everybody is always saying at, during the line and they're checking in and, you know, we just can't believe this and we're so grateful. And she turned and looked at me and it was one of those right on mm -hmm. with one tear coming down her face. Yeah. And I just mouthed the words, thank you. And I knew from the yep. bottom of her heart that she was there because she really needed to be there. Mm-hmm. And she was a little bit ashamed. She was she was humbled, I think. Yeah. You well, that's what, what the overwhelming emotion becomes because you you really can't believe that this much is here right. and it's for these folks who need right. some help. Right. And like I said, the truckload, the battalion of volunteers yeah. that you have now at three locations. I'm right. so impressed to it's hear amazing. that. Um, the other thing is that um, this year with the Butte Fire and what we've experienced, we are inviting everybody who lost their home, uh, whether they were a renter or an owner, to mm -hmm. sign up with us because Great. we want to provide them um, access to um, Christmas. That's great. Um, they can also come in for Thanksgiving. And if at this point in time, if anybody needs food that were that they were affected, they lost a home mm -hmm. or partial a home, whatever their loss was. They can come in as often as they need to, oh, um, because okay. if I'm living in a trailer on my property, mm -hmm. I might not have a huge refrigerator. Yeah, you don't have any storage right? space. So if I need to come in every week, I can. Mm -hmm. And we just want people to know that the Resource Connection Food Bank is here to support our community, um, not just for food every day, but especially for the holidays. There's so many people right now that are calling saying, how can we help these families? Mm -hmm. How can we help them? Yep. And, and so I say, be part of this. Yep. Donate, bring in unwrapped toys. They need to be new because that's mm -hmm. very respectful of giving people oh, new sure. toys. Yep. Um, but, but donate, um, donate monetarily. Um, we purchase food. I, I was going to ask that. Do, mm -hmm. is, is there a line where you say, okay, we don't want this stuff. We'd rather get some cash. Well, I cash mean, is I, better because, well, I don't want to say cash is better. What I know. I, a what donation like to, is a donation. What I like donation. to say is mm -hmm. it's yes and yes. Mm -hmm. It's yes on this and $25 purchases for us, we can do the ham and all of the things that we're going to purchase for Christmas. Oh, so great. if you can imagine this plus a mm -hmm. ham, for example. Oh yeah. Um, t for twenty-five dollars, we can give a family a, a big meal for for the holidays. So we ask for monetary donations because that really makes a difference to us. Mm -hmm. This is a hundred percent community supported. Yep. So if I get two hundred turkeys donated. 
Mm -hmm. at our Stuff the Bus. Stuff the right? Bus. That means I have to buy a thousand hams at Christmas. <laughs> right? So I've already done the numbers. And so the monetary donations that come in during the holidays help really with help that kind of stuff. with that, okay. with those kind of things that we purchase. All right. So it makes a huge difference. Now we're getting a little bit short of time. I don't want to rush us out of here, but also I want to remind folks that this is a year-round thing yes. too. Uh, yes. People don't suddenly have full bellies all no. through the new year. No. No. Um, and so is there a way that they can donate to the food bank year round? Yes. And um, we have a couple of ways. Um, we have what we call our Calaveras Food Project. Okay. And all they have to do is call our office and mm -hmm. ask about it and we can sign them up. They can be part of a group. So Mike, I would say, Mike, do you know three or four friends mm -hmm. in your community or at work? Yep. And would you like to join us in the Calaveras Food Project? What we ask is we give you a reusable grocery bag. I see. And we ask that once every two months, you collect food from your friends, you give them the bags, and you collect food from your friends. Okay. So you can go buy one, get one free at the store. Mm -hmm. Gives you plenty of time to shop, so you're only sure. doing this six times a year, right? Yeah, okay. And bring that to the food bank. That is a Great. way that we are for ongoing encouraging that ongoing and exactly support. and that makes a huge difference great. and then monetarily our community has done a great job supporting the food bank and I just hope that yeah. that they continue because it makes a difference well that's you know me personally I will look right at the camera and say you know it's you folks who make this happen right. and um, it's your generosity and your understanding and I, I'm glad mm -hmm. Jeannie that you were able to help us understand that that and that's why I stress so much that these aren't people who, you know, are the the less than desirables. These are the families who have little kids who are going to school and dad got laid off and exactly. now he's driving to God knows where to um, to keep some food coming to the table mm -hmm. and you guys are able to help with that. Or a little senior bit who's on disability. And the seniors. Seniors, or that's a part of our income. community. It's who, huge. Yep, it's huge. That's huge. right. So I congratulate you. Thank you. I congratulate you and I ask you to help with those 200 turkeys. Right. Let's make it 400 That'd and shock awesome. Jeannie. <laughs> I would love Let's that. Let's shock her, folks. <laughs> Let's make it a thousand turkeys. What the heck? That would be you know, great. Yeah, there that you would go. Be great. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, Resource Connection Food Bank does great work. Thank Support you. Santa's Express. When you see those red containers, fill them up. Let's fill those buses too. Thanks for joining me on Mondo Calaveras, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mike Taylor. Enjoy. <laughs>